Would you like to know about the coolest schools ever? Oh yeah, we're talking about that. <laughs> Welcome to the Cool Teacher Show here in the Cool Teacher Lounge. We're going to talk about the coolest schools, well, the coolest schools we could find anyway, that your students could possibly uh, go to. These are eight of the coolest schools um, that we think are out there, and they, they cover different areas, And but y you'll see. Um, I'm going to start because I was so blown away by this. There is a school out there with an edible schoolyard. I knew you would like that. Oh my Anything goodness. Anything about food, Chris Anything is about all food. over it. I don't know that I'm, I'm necessarily a foodie because a foodie would imply that you know I have some particular no, taste. No, I'm the food snob. She, she's the food snob, yeah, I'm just the food. Food, well, yeah, foodie. Equal rights to all food. That's right. No food will be denied. <laughs> So um, No food goes uneaten. Yeah. So <laughs> Martin Luther King School in Berkeley, California, has a one-acre organic garden and <sighs> kitchen classroom. That sounds like so much fun. Right. It's a middle school, six through eight, and they have like 62 different lessons where they bring in the food that they grow. First of all, they learn how to grow it, um, all different kinds, not just uh, not just the, the big food stuffs, but, um, but all of the oh, herbs and spices. Oh, and they're in Berkeley, spices. California. They can yeah. grow food practically year-round. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Lucky they, they you. And, and they use this one acre plot um, not only to feed the students healthy food every day. It's in an urban area, which makes it a little bit trickier to get, you know, we, we hear all the time about kind of uh, food deserts where you have these communities that have only a couple of little convenience store shops to actually shop from, yeah. you know, and so people get ramen and microwave meals and pizzas and it's not very healthy. Bad stuff, yeah. But, but at Martin Luther King... Um, they have this garden, which they feed their students from breakfast and lunch every day. Now, do they have a culinary school there, too? It's part of the curriculum. They cook. They cook so there. So the 62 lessons that they have for their 6th through 8th graders um, are built into these two areas. There's actually the, the gardening part, and then there is the kitchen or the, the cooking part where they're teaching them actually how to prepare food for the rest of their lives. So it's sustainable. and it's sustainable, it's so yeah. It's wonderful. What a great sounding school. It's, a, it's actually a model program for edible education, but part of a larger group of schools called the Edible Schoolyard Project. So you ought to check it out. The link is uh, here and below in the description. It sounds like such a cool school. Well, that sounds great. And my school, my, my first school I'm going to talk about sort of matches that a little bit because it focuses on sustainability. Okay. It's located about 25 miles east of Flagstaff, Arizona. I don't know if you've ever been to I Flagstaff. I have. I have. And if you look at an aerial of the school, it really does look like it's in a desert. What what it is, it's the the country's first solar and wind-powered school. Really? It's a charter school. It's called STAR, S-T-A-R, which stands for Service to All Relations okay. School. And it's a okay. charter school. It's preschool through the eighth grade, small classes, but they really teach sustainability as a way of life there and the, the model of the school, the solar and the wind powered school. It's the first off the grid. I shouldn't say the first. It's the first off the grid solar That is really cool school. because off the grid is a hard thing to get to happen because you've really got to have the infra infrastructure in place or, or things can break down right. really fast. So the small class sizes, Waiting list, of course. So parents have to get going yeah. if they want their kids to be and going to that school. It's kind of in a remote area it out is. there. Yes, it's on the edge of a of a, a Native American reservation. Oh, okay. Okay. So it's wow. It's, isn't that exciting? That's really cool. So let's let's stick with the theme of remote here. Okay. Um, and I want to talk about Hana High School. Now you've been to Hawaii a number of times. Yes. Have you been to Maui before? Yes. I love Maui. Well, you may remember that on one side of the island you have Lahaina and Kanapali and um, all of these different uh, areas. Um, and then this long, windy, sometimes two hours, the sometimes road four. road to Hana. Every time I Hana. take it, I swear it's the last time. That road <laughs> right. makes me car sick. Check it out. Look at it's Google beautiful. it if you haven't seen it. It's absolutely beautiful. But it, there are 59 bridges, and it's this incredibly it's long like drive. There, and yep. then little one-lane yeah. roads that you have to move over for another big, yeah. huge truck. Can you imagine driving a delivery truck no. on that road? I would be so no, no. petrified. Yeah, it's... It's, it's uh, kind of a sketchy road, a gray road, as my wife would say. Um, and it is Hana is one of the one of the few remaining traditionally Hawaiian cultural 
and ethnic communities, right? It's it because it's so isolated. Uh, there are not a lot of Howley like me there. Um, it's it's pretty traditional community. And here's what's really interesting: they uh, they're not a rich area, not at all, um, and and not traditionally very. I guess technically driven, but they are the number one high school in Hawaii for television and in Hawaii. film. Yeah, and television and film production, right? And one of the leaders in the nation. They're part of a um, a system called uh, Hiki No, which is a student news network that actually broadcasts in prime time on the PBS station in Hawaii. That is so exciting. It's really, really cool. Can you cool. imagine the footage yeah. they must get there? It's so beautiful. So Yeah, Hana High is really good, like exceptionally good, at making television and movies. So their students actually... That they can get jobs yeah. in that, if they like it, they yeah. can get jobs in that field. So they come up with, they, they research, they shoot, they edit, and they produce all of this television. And in, in a very traditional and expected kind of Hawaiian tradition, they're really good at storytelling. And so these students so cool. go through this high school. They learn the technical and the production skills. And many actually leave Han and go to work in, in the industry, um, which is not bad for a school of only 359 students <laughs> and 26 <gasps> teachers. Oh, I, that was, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. But it's a very small school. Hana High, really Hana cool. Hana High. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'll have to go there the next time. And okay. we'll have to make a field trip there. <gasps> Darn. Yes. Darn. That's what we're going to do. Hana High, we are coming. <laughs> we're coming to your school. We Will the cool teachers be, be allowed to do something there? Please, we'll, we'll, yeah, we can wrap right. this into professional right. development Right, we'll somehow. do something. Please. Well, that sounds cool. Well, and my next school is something that's very near and dear to our hearts because both Chris and I are online instructor, yes. instructors. We, I, we know that Florida has always been leading the country in online teaching. I mean, they're mm -hmm. very famous. And, and white Rebel socks pulled up to your knees. Oh, I didn't know that. Florida also leads that in sandals with white socks. Oh, well, mm -hmm. see, that's something I didn't know. There's I want to talk about the Florida Virtual <laughs> School. It's a online middle and high school, and, of course, they advertise they're open 365 days a year, all day, 24 hours a day. Well, <laughs> we know the teachers are not uh, obviously yeah, Described working. by students everywhere as the worst school ever. ever. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, you mean I have to go to school 365 days a year? No. No, you don't. No, really. it's a nightmare. No, it's it, you can go to school. You can start the classes just about any time. Mm -hmm. So it's really about student choice. Yeah. It really opens up opportunities to students who maybe want to add another course that they're taking, that they're not taking at their public high school, at their regular physical high school. Yeah. And so they can take an online course through Florida Virtual School. Cool thing is it's free to all Florida students. That's pretty cool. So they don't have to pay a thing. It's a public school. And you know, it's, it's it's convenient. It's flexible. They hire, they have certified teachers who help the students with their schoolwork. And it's, it's just a great model for being able to use online learning to the highest level of convenience for students. A lot of online schools, I shouldn't say a lot, but probably the traditional online school is this, the the course starts at a certain time and ends at a certain time. So right. if you miss that, that you don't open get to... and rolling enrollment. Right. Yeah. So I thought that was really really neat. Chris. That is cool. And Florida Virtual School does a lot of other really innovative things. Maybe we'll save an episode just to talk about some of the cool innovations that uh, that are coming down the pipe. Right. Okay. So I've got another one for you, but let's go all the way to the other coast, back to the Seattle Washington metro area. Okay. Risebeck. Aviation High School. Where was this when I was in high school? I oh. would have moved. Oh, my husband would have loved yeah. it. He would have loved it. So no surprise, it's in conjunction with Boeing and about 150 other companies. Um, but student, students can learn to fly planes. I'm going to say that again. Students can learn to fly planes. They're also learning the aviation industry, but students can learn to fly planes. That which is, is so cool. Does that make you nervous? I mean, No, no. What about student drivers? <laughs> Well, student drivers know. makes me nervous. How about mm. student pilots? But maybe pilots. Maybe they're oh. more focused because they they know what they know. They don't know anything about it. With driving, they think they maybe know. Well, I yeah, know. okay, maybe so. 
Well, so are they sp- training them though? Is like does, does Boeing have a? a oh well, Boeing has, brings in the experts, and all these other right. aviation companies bring in these these experts. But they are preparing. They don't. It's not like they graduate high school and suddenly they're an airline pilot. That would scare me to death. <laughs> um, students prepare to become pilots, to become astronauts, astrophysicists, and other like flight and aviation industry it gets them professionals. Interested in mm-hmm. science and, yeah. and and technology and math and all well, those. and like a lot. Not, like a lot of these themed schools, we've got one here in Idaho, which is a medical technical charter, and they become, they, I mean, they actually build classes. I think they, they can get their phlebotomy cert- certification. I mean, they start down the process. Their what? <laughs> phlebotomy. <laughs> you know, like, I'll have to look that one up. <laughs> phlebotomy is when the people who take your butt, uh, blood. Uh, I thought you were going to say, say something else. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, yeah, they, yeah. But, um, okay, we'll skip that so, part. <laughs> Risebeck is is a public uh, school, right? So um, it's free to students who get accepted. That is amazing. Yeah, and you can be in a club where you fly a plane. There's also one I discovered when I was researching this in New York. So these are maybe starting to pop up. Um, you could uh, send your favorite or least favorite student to one of these <laughs> academies. This was a really interesting school because it's was it's set on the city's last. 55-acre farm. I don't know exactly what that means, but anyhow, right. it's the very last 55-acre okay. plot that they have. And, and the students, they study animal sciences and horticulture, and they work on the farm and, and work on the, the land. It's a and farm school. It's a school it's to a, learn farming. And they learn agricultural technology. And I thought, well, that's interesting because oh. we're in the field of educational technology, so I'm going to have to do more research on what agricultural Technology. Well, I, I mean, I'm sure that it spreads into the sciences as we, as you know, as we talk about right. um, modified crops and how you how do you modify genes and crops and cross crops to create these different types of right. uh, engineered things. I'm sure that it has to do with the, I mean, the mechanical equipment and computer equipment. They probably learn how to fly drones, which are becoming a really big part right. of agricultural science study. Yeah, so crop surveying. Um, you know, you don't. So can you imagine what their school supply list must look like? It must be a little bit different. <laughs> They must have to have like quadcopter, shovel, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. rubber boots, rubber uh, boots. trowel, yeah, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So they might, it might be interesting. It's so I'm so jealous. I would love to go and, and wouldn't that studies. be fun yeah. in Chicago though? In the winter, I guess uh, maybe they are working on yeah. covering covering plants. Yeah. Maybe oh, they probably have greenhouses too. They might. They I, might. I'm sure they do. I'm sure they do too. That's pretty so, dang Chicago cool. Chicago High School for Agricultural Sciences. Go. Okay, so let's take another big city. Let's go back to New York. Now, part of a larger group they called the Institute of Play, we have a school in New York called Quest to Learn. You've probably heard about Quest to Learn. Our colleague, uh, Katie Salen, has been instrumental in, in the start of that, but it is. <sighs> a game-based school. Right up all your the, alley. All the lessons, all the learning management system, and they built their own to be able to do that. All of the curriculum, game-based. Instead of teachers kind of grabbing a book and deciding what to teach out of it or teaching the curriculum that's been handed to them, the curriculum at Quest to Learn is designed by instructional designers and game designers. So students can reach their own level. They're yes. not competing really with other students. No. They're competing with themselves. There is a little PVP, but there's a lot more PVE, player versus environment, or in this case, player versus education. So it's really a cool place. Um, and I, I just love that when they see a problem, they like, oh, we want a student to interact with this concept. They put an instructional designer and a game designer together, and they build something that they can play. And often these are board games. Often they're digital games or, or card games or other types of things, but they make everything playful. It's fun. Yeah. And, and they're competing, and they want to get those points. That's There's so, There's just something so about it. We're yeah. all like that. We are all game-based, yeah, really. Yeah, we really, we really are, which is, I think, these are some really cool schools. Now, we may have to do another episode on this again because of... What's of that the, called again? The Quest? What's quest that? to Learn. Quest to Learn. Yeah, in New York. And it's it's a neat, neat place. So we, we may have to cover this topic again because I'm sure that there are more than the eight that we found. These were just the eight that we, we really, really liked. So 
it's sad because we're not in school anymore. How we we don't get to go to these schools. I know. But I have a surprise for Barbara today <gasps> in Cool Teacher Extracurricular. I'm going to tell her three schools that we can go to for professional development that are even cooler. But wait a minute, than these. I have one more school. You do? Do we have time for? Of my, course, I'll we do have a time real quick for one, one more. A real quick one. I need to learn to count. Naperville. Central High School, which is also in Illinois. Okay. Naperville is kind of famous for their really good basketball teams, I think. But mm-hmm. anyhow, Chris, what do you think is the most, the single most powerful tool you have to optimize your brain function? <gasps> Pork rinds. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe for you, but it's exercise. Exer- well, exercise was, was 1A. So this high school, and the reason I found out about it is I read this, I started reading this book by this author, uh, Rayleigh is his last name. He's a psychiatrist. He right. works at Harvard, and he's also a licensed psychiatrist in Massachusetts. He wrote this book. He's written another book called Wild or something. I have to look that one okay. up. But the one I have is called Spark, The Science of Exercise and the Brain. And he talks about this Naperville High School because he used it as a case study. What they did is they they their students weren't doing very well. There was a PE teacher and thought, hmm, kids are not exercising as much. And he started looking at their PE program and realizing that the sports really don't work because kids, they stand around a lot right, in between right. hitting the baseball or kicking the soccer ball or whatever. The students at this high school do cardiovascular exercise during zero hour and they have to run the mile one time a week. Okay. And so it's what they found is this exercise, this cardiovascular exercise, really helped the students focus and do so much better in school. I would agree with and that. The test scores. It doesn't were there surprise to, me. There to prove a bit. it. So what a model to create for schools when schools are maybe cutting out physical activity from the curriculum. It's the most important thing for your brain. Yeah. I thought that was fascinating. That if is fascinating. If you read this book, Spark. Spark. Okay. Or the Go Wild, his new book, Go Wild, sort of like you return to your yeah. roots as a caveman or something and oh. you're running around and or a cave girl or a cave woman. Okay. And you run around and, and you, you, you can think better. I guess that you can run away from those wild animals or something. Uh, I, and Probably. where is this school again? <laughs> Naperville? <laughs> Naperville Central okay. High School. That is pretty cool. Yeah, that is that pretty cool. Neat. Well, hopefully learning about these schools a little bit more um, will, will help you to, uh, to talk intelligently with your students about the cool things that you guys are doing, but also just knowing what's out there, I think, I know. makes a difference. It's in, exciting. Yeah, it's really, Gives us ideas. It's really cool. All right. So I'm excited to get to the list that I have, but we're not going to be able to do that now. Uh, There's the bell again. Again. School's over yeah. Uh, again. Yep. So please um, jump on uh, Facebook and and like it. You'll have an opportunity to win stuff w- that we're going to give away. Really we've, cool stuff. We've been asking for um, a little bit of opportunity to uh, to give stuff away to our fellow cool teachers, and uh, and we've we've heard the the correct answer there. So so jump on there and uh, and we'll communicate with you that way. Like this video or uh, just hit us up on Twitter. Right. Um, we're happy to chat with you and and. See what cool stuff you're doing. We asked for and called out for a week ago pictures from your teacher lounge. We want to compare our cool teacher lounge with your cool teacher lounge. I'm sure um, yours is cooler. It's probably cooler. a little bit cooler. But uh, send us those machine. pictures, yeah. uh, and uh, and we'll put those up on our, our Facebook page. <laughs> yeah, we, they probably do have a coffee machine. I told you, bring one in. I know. I'm not I, into I, the I stuff, know, but I know. I have know to do it. it. Okay. Whatever. Well, um, so check us out on uh, the Cool Teacher Extracurricular if you want to see or hear about the new schools that or opportunities for professional development that Barbara and I can go to do and you could go do as well. Thanks Sounds for like hanging that. out with us, and we'll see you next time. Class dismissed. Bye-bye. <laughs>